good morning to all welcome to the session the hindu editorial analysis for proficiency in english am i audible now still no audio now it should be okay audible now ha huh. so once again good morning to all and welcome to the session the hindu editorial analysis for proficiency in english today's editorial is all about a scam at national stock exchange nsc an important article editorial a little complicated not easy to understand so many words so many words and many of these words are new i had to spend a lot of time to bring the meanings of these words and today i may not be able to do the analysis because we have to spend a lot of time on editorial vocabulary besides the analysis today you are going to work on practice questions based on exam topics errors fillers para jumble idioms as usual editorial words now let us go to as i said today's editorial a lot of words many of these words we have got for the first time so you got to listen very carefully a house of cards this is an idiomatic expression what does it mean usually a lot of people i'm sure you guys as kids you must have tried to create a house using playing cards placing one above the other a house of cards but it has a meaning as an idiomatic expression what does it mean used to refer to an insubstantial or insecure situation or scheme a house of cards means something that is not strong something that is very fragile or delicate may collapse any moment it means insecure situation or scheme systemic i use the word systematic quite often systematic approach systematic is different and what is the word over here systemic systemic means relating to a system especially as opposed to a particular part if you take a part then we say a fragment but when we use the word systemic it talks about not about a fragment it talks about the entire system then we use the word systemic an important word stem as a noun it goes with plants and trees you all know but as a verb it has a different meaning altogether originate in or be caused by source of something stem from means begin from an important word as a verb misdeed singular misdeeds plural it's a noun a wicked or illegal act wicked bad or illegal act not legally acceptable evince usually takes a word a response evince a response means what reveal the presence one meaning indicate usually evins means to get the response from someone and indicate indicate better you remember the word indicate lack luster an important word lacking in vitality force or conviction uninspired or uninspiring something that is not enthusiastic not uh, inspiring then we say lack luster performance a typical combination laid back it takes a word approach laid back approach an important expression relaxed and easy going not very serious someone is preparing for competitive exams he or she is not very serious and the approach is not very serious not dedicated then what do you say he has taken a laid back approach an important expression allege we have got claim or assert that someone has done something illegal or wrong typically without proof jarring we have got for the first time usually it goes with uh, noise incongruous means not harmonious in a striking or shocking way you can also use or think of the word clashing surreal this word goes with uh, photography painting surreal means having the qualities of surrealism then you cannot make out what exactly it means surreal bizarre bizarre means something different something weird something strange we use the word bizarre that is an important word lapse another important word singular lapse plural lapses 
a brief or temporary failure of concentration, memory or judgment, lapse on my part, lapse on his part, lapse on the part of the management, sleuths we have got for the first time, a person who investigates crimes or simply you can remember the word a detective, watchdog we have got once or twice, a person or organization responsible for making certain that companies obey particular standards in this context. Generally, if you go to a village, elderly people, they try to protect the traditions and the values and the culture. We use the expression watchdogs of the traditions, watchdogs of the culture, an important word. Assertion, assert, assertive, assertion, noun form. Another important word, it goes with the workplace. A confident and forceful statement of fact or belief. Assertion, to state something firmly with conviction. We got this word yesterday or day before yesterday. Ostensibly, as appears or is st stated to be true, though not necessarily so. Something looks or appears to be true may not be true. Another word you have to think of, apparently or obviously. At the behest of. Always try to remember the complete phrase and also the word combinations. It takes a preposition at, at the behest of, at, at the beginning of, at the end. What does it mean? On a person's orders or command, he has done it at the behest of someone's orders. Catchy, usually it goes with a catchy expression, a catchy style, a catchy phrase of a tune or phrase, as I said. Instantly appealing and memorable. A lot of people like and they catch it immediately. They like and they get, uh, they find it quite uh, appealing. Then we use the word catchy slogan, catchy phrase. Detract. Distract means to deviate someone from the path. That's a different word. Detract. Detract. Diminish the worth or value of something, a quality or achievement. Deploy, we have got many a time. Deploy means what? To place in position, usually it goes with police, troops, move troops or equipment into position for military action. The police have been deployed in the city. Lacunae, another important word, an unfilled, unfilled space or a gap. Lacunae, an important word, it's a foreign word, it means gap. Crack down, phrasal verb, to take positive regulatory or disciplinary action. Entail, we have got for the first time, involves something as a necessary or inevitable part of consequence, part or consequence. It entails something, means involves something as a necessary or inevitable part or consequence. Premise, base an argument, theory or undertaking on something. On the premise of, it takes a preposition of. Gel, usually this word goes with conversational English. Gel with someone, gel with something of a project or idea. Take a definite form or begin to work well. Gel means to mingle, to get along. Top brass of an organization, top brass of a company. The people in the highest positions in an organization. If you take any organization, you have the hierarchy, you have the organogram. On the, at the top, you have the top management people. When we refer to those people, we use the expression, the top brass. Sanctity, we have got once or twice. The state or quality of being holy, sacred, or saintly. Tad, we have got for the first time. To, small, to a small extent, somewhat, not substantial. Lacadiacical, an important word. Lacking enthusiasm, determination, or you can also say carelessly lazy. This also goes with the performance response, lackadaisical response, a lukewarm response. We also use one more expression. Deterrent, we have got many a time. A thing that discourages or is intended to discourage someone from doing something. So this editorial, as I said, a lot of words, and many of these words are not uh, the regular words, and uh, one sentence, a lot of words. Today, I will try to focus more on because it is a little complicated, I will try to focus more on the language part. Language part. A house of cards. When you read something like this, not easy to comprehend. What exactly does it mean? 
first you have to know it is an idiomatic expression and it means something like something that is fragile or delicate or brittle a house of cards you may also think of your childhood days nostalgic you may think a lot of kids i'm sure almost all the kids as kids we all try to construct a house so called house using playing cards and any moment it may it would fall because of the wind or you blow at it and uh, here it is an idiomatic expression what does it mean something that is uh, delicate or fragile this talks about as i said this is all about national stock exchange one sebi another so a house of cards what is the main idea of this editorial systemic risks stemming from misdeeds at the nsc have evinced lackluster response now look at this sentence one sentence how many words are there for you to learn systemic stemming misdeeds evinced lackluster one sentence there are five words not one or two five words and as i said systemic goes with a system not related to a fragment or part but related to a system in this context it talks about obviously nsc stem has two different meanings we all know when it comes to plants and uh, trees tree usually we say trunk but plants we use the word stem the stem the branches the roots typical parts stem here used as a verb it means what come from originate from stems from it always takes a preposition from i would like to reiterate today i'm going to do from the language proficiency point of view uh, not from the analysis is going to be different so misdeeds what does it mean misdeed a wicked or illegal act something that is not good at the nsc has evinced evince indicate it goes with a response here lackluster response lackluster lacking in vitality force or conviction uninspired or uninspiring now let us look at the language part systemic risks stemming from misdeeds one phrase at the nsc have evinced lackluster response now when it comes to english language generally the basic pattern subject plus verb plus object svo pattern if the writer uses only three words then we don't consider that person he or she a writer they have to add a lot of information in one sentence and how do writers do that with the help of phrases and clauses here systemic risks a noun phrase this is a subject and coming to have evinced this is a verb here it is in present perfect we have a helping verb we have the main or action verb have evinced what you ask a question lackluster response only response object but before that there is an adjective what sort of a response lackluster response so the though the pattern is the same subject verb object when you come across a simple sentence based on a simple pattern it becomes a little complicated for two reasons one reason the writer has used the two phrases stemming from misdeeds one phrase at the nsc second phrase not only that the writer has used a few adjectives and because of that it becomes a little complicated but once you understand when you read a sentence uh, i'm talking from the language proficiency point of view if you have the ability to make out or identify the phrases and clauses that go with a particular subject or a particular object it becomes easy for you to comprehend now you may ask sir why do you want to talk about the language proficiency part today there are two reasons one reason this editorial is a little complicated you need a bit of background information but that is not the actual reason the reason why i decided i have decided to focus on the proficiency part a lot of words one sentence so many words obviously not easy to comprehend because of two reasons one reason you may not know the meanings of the words then you have to find out the meanings of the words second reason the pattern patterns are very important the basic pattern as we were pattern but use of phrases and clauses makes the whole thing uh, complicated that is a reason 
let us go to the event usually editorial is written based on based on a stimulus means some event some incident the sunday evening arrest of chitra ramakrishna the former md and ceo the top brass of india's largest stock exchange by the central bureau of investigation cbi should change the course of what has been a laid back probe into alleged misuse of exchange data by market players and jarring even surreal governance lapses it's a lengthy sentence and uh, it is uh, it's like a paragraph then imagine under pressure you have to read a sentence this is imagine this as a question in the exam you have to read a sentence like this and spot the error definitely it is not easy it is going to be an uphill task but all things are difficult before they are easy initially everything is difficult but if you practice a lot the same thing becomes easy how do you make it easy you should know first what the subject is what the main verb is what the object is after that the related phrases and clauses here the key word the sunday evening arrest the key word is arrest <clears throat> of chitra ramakrishna the former md and ceo of india's largest stock exchange all related to a particular person by the central bureau of investigation cbi again a phrase should change the course of the sunday evening arrest should change the course this is actual idea the sunday evening arrest should change the course of what of what has been a laid back probe into alleged misuse of exchange data by market players and jarring even surreal governance lapses once you try to once you try to isolate i always tell students before 2016 bank exams they would give very short sentences very simple sentences but after that 2016 sbi changed the whole thing now banks i started telling i started telling the students uh, way back in 2016 have been telling since then today bank exams are going in the direction of cat what do the letters stand for common admission test more or less the same patterns the so called new patterns are nothing but cat models so one of the changes lengthy sentences then the candidate is under tremendous pressure to read comprehend isolate the phrases and clauses and then be able to spot the error definitely no second thoughts and uphill task but whatever it is you should learn slowly when you read the editorial make it a habit to isolate first the subject then the verb then the object then comes the related phrases and clauses that go with the subject the related phrases and clauses that go with an object very important if you make it a habit in the long run it helps especially bank exams very important let us have a look at the words the first one laid back probe you all know the meaning of the word probe investigation a laid back probe laid back approach what does it mean relaxed not very serious we have alleged already we have got this word many a time claim or assert that someone has done something illegal or wrong but there is no proof you should also recollect the word allegation the noun form accusation then we have jarring usually it goes with noise sound jar jarring in this context it means incongruous something that is not harmonious having the qualities of incongruous in a striking or shocking way you can also say clashing clashing with something surreal usually this goes with photography it goes with painting and uh, something that is unusual weird strange bizarre we use the word surreal and lapse is an important word sometimes what happens we focus on something while focusing on something we, we may miss something more important a brief or temporary failure of concentration memory or judgment then we say there was a lapse on the part of the editor or there was a lapse on the part of someone a delhi court has granted cbi sleuths 7 days to interrogate the former national stock exchange boss about a month after the stock market watchdog sebi 
passed a 190 page order that has made headlines for its assertions about Ms. Ramakrishna sharing confidential internal information with an unknown person. From where to where? This sentence again, a lengthy sentence, it looks more like a paragraph, not easy to comprehend. Let us try to find out what exactly the subject is. A Delhi court has granted CBI sleuths. A Delhi court has granted. Delhi court subject has granted verb present perfect tense. Whom? CBI sleuths. To that extent, easy to comprehend. Subject, verb, object. Seven days to interrogate. One phrase. Seven days to interrogate. The former National Stock Exchange boss. Another phrase. About a month after the stock market watchdog SEBI. Here we have a clause. About a month after the stock market watchdog SEBI passed a. There is another verb here. Has granted one clause. Whenever you come across a verb in a particular lengthy sentence, do remember it may have two or three phrases, two or three clauses. Passed a 190 page order. One more clause that has made headlines for its assertions about Ms. Ramakrishna sharing confidential internal information with an unknown person. In a nutshell, what does it talk about? It talks about the former uh, CEO, National Stock Exchange, NSC boss, the former boss, sharing information with an unknown person. And based on that, the person, the national, the former boss of NSC getting arrested by the, has granted CBI sleuths to interrogate and being interrogated. In a nutshell, it is all about the arrest of the top brass of former chief of the NSC. But the writer has tried to present a lot of information in one sentence with the help of the phrases and the clauses. Again, first you have to know the meanings of the words, then the pattern, then you'll be able to comprehend. There is one word over here, sleuth, means what? A person who investigates crimes. You can also think of the word a detective. Watchdog, an important, Sebi is a watchdog. And uh, what does it mean? Usually it goes with, uh, Elderly people, village level, they try to protect the traditions and the customs and the values. Then we use, they are the watchdogs of the village culture. A person or organization responsible for making certain that companies obey particular standards. When it comes to a village, people obey certain traditions or certain values. Assertion, an important word, a confident and forceful statement of fact or belief. Separately, the CBA has got extended custody of Anand Subramanian, the NSE's former group operating officer, hired ostensibly at the behest of, remember I have said, you have to look at the entire thing, at the behest of the unknown yogi. That's why the word surreal has been used. Disregarding the kind of internal controls and governance norms one expects from an institution of such systemic importance in the financial market. This writer seems to be fond of lengthy sentences. Every idea you come across, each one looks like a paragraph, lengthy sentences. Separately, the CBA has got extended, present perfect, custody of Anand Subramanian, the NSC's former group operating officer, hired ostensibly, ostensible, we have got once or twice, as appears or is stated to be true, Though not necessarily so, something appears to be true, but may not be. And you can also think of two words. One is apparently, the other one is obviously, ostensibly adverb. At the behest of a person's orders or command, at the behest of, at the order of, at the command of, the unknown yogi, disregarding the kind of internal controls, not considering the internal controls and governance norms. Norms means uh, rules, values. One expects from an institution of such systemic importance. I already have given the meaning of the word systemic related to a system, not a fragment in the financial markets. The catchy details must not detract from the larger questions arising from the deployment of co-location services and the lacunae in India's oversight mechanisms over its capital markets reflected in the multi-layered failure 
to crack down on the wrongdoings at the NSC. As I said, this writer is very fond of lengthy sentences. You've got to read at least five or six times to understand this particular editorial. One reading, not uh, easy to make out. Let us have a look at uh, the words. The catchy details generally takes the word, phrase, expression, style, catchy, means something instantly appealing and memorable. You get attracted within no time. Then we use the word catchy. Detract. Distract is different. Detract is different. You've got to be a little careful. Diminish the worth or value of something, especially quality or achievement. Deployment, we have got many a time. To place in position, usually it goes with police, the troops, place in position. Lacunae, an important word. Unful, unfilled space or gap. Lacunae in India's oversight mechanisms means gaps in. You can also think of lacunae in the policy. Lacunae in the structure means gaps in the policy. Crackdown, usually it goes with uh, a protest, uprising, and uh, rebellious nature of a particular group, crackdown, to take positive regulatory or disciplinary action, crackdown. The co-location services offered by the NSC, which give market operators willing to pay a premium, a head start on exchange trading data and refine their own algorithms for high frequency trades are permitted by SEBI, but were ostensibly misused by certain players. I don't want to go into the details. Uh, today, I'm focusing only on the language part. There's nothing to learn a uh, vocabulary point of view from this sentence. The NSC's case entails an unfair advantage provided to some brokers within its co-location user community. Entail an important word. Involve as a necessary or inevitable part or consequence. Entail certain rights means involves certain rights. Whatever the defenders of such services may say, the premise of giving players with deeper pockets quicker and more information than the average retail investor does not gel with an open market philosophy. As I said, this is a scam. It talks about what is right, what is wrong. And here there are two words. You have to know the meanings of these two words. One is premise means what base an argument, theory or undertaking on something on the premise of do remember it takes a preposition of and does not gel with an open market philosophy, something is fishy, then it is not open, there's no transparency. This goes with that particular idea, does not gel. Gel has many meanings, but in this context, it means take a definite form or begin to work well. I don't gel with those people, means what? I cannot mingle with those people. This word goes with everyday English. That institutional mechanisms from the NSC's board and auditors to SEBI, an independent regulator accountable to parliament have not delivered is a larger worry. There is something to worry about. There are two organizations. One is NSC. The other one is a watchdog SEBI. And uh, accountable to parliament have not delivered. Is a, It's a larger worry. That is something to focus on and a matter of concern. Nearly three years have passed between SEBI's 624 crore fine on NSC for misuse of its co-location services and the latest order against its former top brass. There is one important expression, top brass, the people in the highest position in an organization. A matter where the sanctity of the entire market comes under a cloud should have been treated with a tad more urgency. There are two words over here. It talks about they shouldn't have taken so long. They should have done it immediately. One word is sanctity, the state or quality of being holy, sacred, pure, or saintly. A tad more urgency, somewhat urgency. They shouldn't have taken so long. How does the editorial end? I think this is the last one. The CBI Special Court has observed that SEBI, which began it, this probe in 2016, has been too kind and gentle. That is one observation. While the CBA, after filing an FIR in 2018, has been most lackadaisical, an important word, means what? Lacking enthusiasm and determination, carelessly lazy, all negative expressions based on the two top uh, organizations. 
one is uh, it goes with uh, the kind and gentle approach while the cbi after filing an fir this is important from the exam point of view what is the first letter over here a consonantal letter but it begins with a vowel sound because of that we have to use the indefinite article and an fir in 2018 has been present perfect tense most lackadaisical means what lukewarm response or lazy or lacking enthusiasm with a new sebi chief in place the government led by the finance minister who is reviewing the handling of the nsc case must ensure some deterrent action is accompanied by a review of checks and balances in current governance structures it talks about the solution the solution we should have checks and balances in current governance structures when it comes to systemic that means a system we have to have the checks and there should be some sort of deterrent there's one important word over here deterrent a thing that discourages or is intended to discourage someone from doing something so it acts as a deterrent generally that's what we say this is all about the editorial as i said today i have not focused on the real analysis or the actual analysis what i usually do i focus more on the language part because of so many words and lengthy sentences but uh, it has taken almost uh, 32 minutes i haven't gone very deep if i have to spend if i have to do it in a more elaborate way i definitely that would have been better but we need to spend a lot of time we can't afford to do that and uh, today no questions based on the editorial comprehension point of view we will go straight away to uh, practice questions based on exam topics please have a look at the first one and try to spot the error my sister read by pages after pages of the bible here we don't have to use the preposition by just ignore that my sister read pages after pages of the bible whenever there is a preposition what is the preposition over here after if you have to use the same noun before and after a preposition the noun should be in the singular form not in the plural form what is a noun here page what is a preposition after before and after a preposition same noun then we have to use a noun in the singular form page after page it goes with uh, the rules related to nouns do remember that error location second question john would have told you the truth if you had asked him that's right page after page some editorials are very complicated you need background information and you got to be very good at vocabulary and still you may have to read twice thrice only then it is possible to comprehend very good no error john would have told would plus have plus were past participle form you the truth whenever i have been telling you guys whenever you come across the word if you should become alert and you should think of conditionals and to decide which conditional the sentence has to be in you have to look at the main clause what is the main clause here john would have told you the truth and what is a pattern would plus have plus were past participle then obviously you have to tell yourself this is past conditional which conditional is this past conditional past conditional main clause would plus have plus were past participle form if clause past perfect tense you had asked him it is in past perfect that means what no error very good a lot of students have got it right that is highly appreciable please go to question number three if the majority of the individuals in a state prosper the state itself would prosper this is a little tricky no no it cannot be in present perfect here already there is one verb main verb is what ask 
ask asked asked if the majority of the individuals in a state prosper the state itself would prosper this is a little tricky whenever you come across a conditional this is also based on a conditional sentence if uh, there are two present conditionals are two in number open conditional hypothetical conditional you got to be very careful here there are two ways of dealing with the sentence one if the majority of the individuals in a state prosper here it is in present then here it should be in future it becomes open conditional second main clause we have would then if clause you should use past the verb should be in the past prospered then it becomes hypothetical which one will you touch i have been telling don't touch the if clause always uh, don't touch the main clause always touch the if clause based on the main clause what is the main clause here the state itself would prosper the state itself would prosper the main clause you see would that means here it should be prospered we have to use the verb in the past form prospered if the majority of the individuals in a state prospered the state itself would prosper we don't know the exact context if the context talks about a fact then definitely we should be a little careful but there is no context over here let us go to exactly that's right question number 4 the list of the names of the tax defaulters were published in the newspaper this is also an easy one based on uh, first you read then you'll be able to make out that's right yaku the moment you see if think about conditionals what is the subject of this sentence the list of the names one phrase of the tax defaulters another phrase why have been doing this when you I, when i say this is a phrase this is a phrase you have to catch that you have to grasp that and that's how you have to look at the sentence the list singular then we cannot use a plural verb the list was published perfect let us go to the last question error location he is writing novels ever since he became a graduate this is also a very good question there are standard responses when you see the word if think of conditionals when you see since or for you should think of two tenses one is present perfect tense the other one present perfect continuous to emphasize we use oh good morning shivam after long time since or ever since ever since an important expression it goes with uh, after since or ever since the clause the phrase the word should be in past he became a graduate nothing wrong but here ever since usually goes with present perfect or present perfect continuous he is writing present continuous not correct he has been writing he has been writing novels ever since he became a graduate very good i appreciate all those students who have got it right don't get scared this is the para jumble from an international magazine a lot a lengthy one i had to reduce the font size i hope you you can make out but uh, whatever it is take the elimination approach and try to get uh, i I'm, i'm going to give my number my website my uh, app very soon please wait for a few days wait for a few days a couple of days let us have a look at the parts and try to get uh, the first sentence or the topic sentence chris jones of the university of california berkeley could be the first one that was in cannot be the first one 17 years in the proliferation of rival calculators later cannot be the first one they a pronoun cannot be the first one 
they a pronoun cannot be the first one was on a river there is no subject cannot be the first one so what is the first one a is the first one obviously easy to make out what is the first one over here a is the first one chris jones of the university of california j should have been capital letter chris jones of the university of california berkeley then what chris jones a subject of the university of california berkeley a phrase you need a verb what is the verb that goes with yes very good f is the second one was on chris jones singular was on a river in the amazon rainforest when he put the finishing touches on the world's first online household carbon calculator af1 pair very good what is the third one it goes into the past when was it ask the question when was it that was in 2005 he hoped he the pronoun represents the noun chris jones based on that to be that was in 2005 he hoped that if he could show people how much greenhouse gas was associated with daily activities like driving the car heating the house they might change their behavior people they might change their behavior that means what b d one pair they might change show people how much greenhouse gas was associated with daily activities they might change the behavior and contribute in some small measure to saving the amazon obviously b d one pair what next then it should be easy 17 years and a proliferation of rival calculators later after that so c is the next one trackers are providing a wealth of often neglected information about the carbon emissions of everyday life they are providing what a wealth of neglected information about the carbon emissions of everyday life they provide a proliferation of rival calculators they provide local and micro data which usually supplement the global findings of the intergovernmental panel on climate change ce1 pair af bd ce it looks a little complicated but if you read meticulously very easy to handle now let us go to fillers very good i appreciate all those for two reasons one the text is so much and uh, not easy under pressure live session and uh, second factor peer pressure still you could get the correct order that is highly appreciable please go to fillers double fillers today not that easy contextual awareness contextual awareness grammar knowledge vocabulary and word combinations all these play a part major role when it comes to double fillers or fillers to avoid cancellation there is a need for broad planning does not make any sense to avoid a problem would have been better to avoid pitfalls means problems there is a need for systematic planning of the project seems right to avoid inconvenience nothing wrong convenient planning not correct temporary planning not correct and losses no answer is a third option very good a good management will decide not only the for equipment but also its for deciding priorities this is a little complicated a little complicated got to read meticulously context is a king contextual awareness that matters a lot a good management will decide not only the need for equipment but also its urgency for deciding generally need you can use but not urgency usefulness you can consider utility deciding priorities no 
only the cost for equipment but also its value for deciding cost and value definitely they go hand in hand requirement necessities technology no answer the third option third option a good management will decide not only the cost for equipment but also its value for deciding priorities its necessity would have been correct not necessities you cannot go for the fourth one what is the reason necessity is not the right word have you got it i have seen a lot of students have gone in for the fourth one you cannot the reason being necessities had it been necessity it would have been correct appears to be a small error in the beginning may turn out to be a in the long run before you go to the options you have to think of something the first blank a particular word this you can answer based on uh, what does it mean based on contextual awareness one thing exposure to the language another thing third one it appears to be a small error in the beginning may turn out to be a disaster in the long run seems right no what appears to be a small error in the beginning may turn out to be a blunder in the long run answer is the second option that appears cannot be debacle means failure i will i'm giving the meanings i may not write but listen and catch the meaning debacle a failure fiasco it appears to be it a lot of students if you are not exposed to the language not aware of the context you may go for either the first one or the fourth one fourth one you may not consider slip and you may go in for the first option but i said it is not correct what appears here we have to start with what what appears then an uh, incident no there is one more way you can get this one the correct option small error that is one word one expression and uh, not a small one on the other end you have a bigger one then what is the word for that blunder that's what i'm explaining please listen prasads here there are two things you cannot consider the first option you may ask why it appears to be a small error please focus on every word small error what is opposite blunder not disaster one reason why you cannot consider the first option second reason it does not talk about it appears it does not talk about something it talks about a general statement whatever it means specific what whatever not specific what appears to be a small error in the beginning and one more clue for you turn out may change into a blunder turn out to be a blunder in the long run i hope you guys uh, got it second option i don't know how many of you are uh, know the exact option got the exact option not easy in the sense there is every possibility to go for the first one when it comes to fillers i would like to reiterate four things play a role grammar knowledge vocabulary contextual awareness word combinations all these together you have to consider only then you can choose the correct option that is a common error blunder mistake we cannot use that being very in nature he always uses his skills this is again not easy i am no longer with an academy i would like to i want you guys to know that i left an academy on feb 28th i am no longer with an academy don't expect classes on an academy platforms being very adamant soft they don't go with each other polite basic skills there's no meaning the word basic does not convey anything humble experimental skills there is nothing like experimental skills 
humble means very simple down to earth modest and adamant very strong stubborn not listening to anyone pushy means like a boss someone behaves so uh, pushy in nature pushy character being very pushy in nature he always uses his persuasive skills this seems right mild in nature aggressive they are contrasting how many of you have chosen the fourth option i don't see no one has chosen the fourth option being very pushy huh? now i see somya one student being very pushy in nature he always uses his persuasive skills pushy and persuasive they go hand in hand no no i was not uh, in race never i was uh, with uh, sridhar cc for almost 5 years never with race i was with nsb i was with uh, sridhars for quite a long time 5 years association the new scheme all persons with disabilities defined the disabilities act this is easy should not be that difficult the new scheme discriminates why will they discriminate prejudice not the right word recognizes beneath recognizes can be used but beneath i don't think so under does not go with the context profits not relevant the new scheme usually we use the word covers the new scheme covers all persons with disabilities defined under the disabilities act promises all persons with dis no you cannot use the word promises here answer obviously the fourth option good rapo with cce yakub you have been using a lot of words i use those words regularly that's very good you have they have become part of your personality or rather second nature let us go to idioms the last but one uh last but one slide one more is there editorial vocabulary we are running out of time it's already 8:53 act in a way that is likely to incur problems first you have to read the sentence i can't get a job without a work permit and i can't get a work permit without a job usually it happens they want someone is looking for a job they want those with experience and the person cannot ex get cannot get experience without a job so it's a tricky situation what is the idiom for that catch 22 situation so what does it mean catch 22 that is the idiom a dilemma dilemma also you can say or difficult circumstance from which there is no escape answer is the first one the discovery of the transfer of funds turned out to be a real can of worms what does it mean can of worms i should have used a b c better late than never d e so here a is the answer please go to the second sentence a real can of worms what does it mean no one has responded ha huh? more trouble than you bargained for it should be b with his back to the wall the supplier had to accept the deal back to the wall with his back to the wall what does it mean in a serious difficulty c is the answer the heating system is always breaking down it is a bane of my life something is a bane of my life means what the source of one's unhappiness or misfortune don't say english is a bane of my life not acceptable and also do remember never say english is not my cup of tea not advisable at least while preparing for competitive exams 
So bane of my life, answer is D. What is the last one? Driving fast on these roads is really asking for trouble. Ask for trouble, act in a way that is likely to incur problems. It is E. I hope you guys, these are really important, important idioms today. And do remember, I've started a new channel, Murthy's Bank and SSE Exams. Subscribe and share. Now let us go to editorial vocabulary. Some important words are there. Quick, we are running out of time. It's already 8.57. Stem as a verb. It could be a verb. It could be a noun. In this context, used as a verb. What does it mean? Originate in, start from, source of something. E is the answer. Evince, it's a regular verb. Evince, evinced, means what? Indicate. It goes with the word response. Laid back approach means what? Adjective. Relaxed and easy going. Not advisable. A lackluster performance, uninspiring. This is also adjective. H is the answer. Jarring, incongruous means not harmonious. And uh, it is adjective. Clashing. Surreal, something that is not, uh, looks like it does not belong to this world. Weird, strange, bizarre. So, adjective. Lapse, noun. Temporary failure of judgment or focus or concentration. Sleuth, again, a noun, plural sleuths. A detective, C is the answer. What does it mean? A lacunae, gap, an important word. Noun, uh, G. What are you left with at the behest of adjective? Or it could be a noun at the order, at the command. Uh, what are you left with? A person's orders. That's all about uh, who has got all the 10 correct, the words and the parts of meanings and the parts of speech. That is highly appreciable. My schedule. 8 a.m. We have just done my channel, Murthy's. 7.30 p.m. 200 grammar rules, Murthy's channel, main channel. Not on banks and SSE exams. 8 p.m. How to master nouns. And today it is going to be pronouns. How to master pronouns. Uh, it is at 8 p.m. Murthy's, this channel. That's all for today. Thanks for being with me till 8.59. Have a nice day. And do remember to subscribe and share. Join the Telegram group. You will come to know if there's a session, no session, important notice. You will come to know. After the session, go to the description of the video. Click on the link. After that, you don't have to do anything. I'll provide the PDF. Try to work on today. As I said, a lot of words. You have to spend a lot of time on this editorial for two reasons. You have to read once, twice, thrice to comprehend the editorial. Second, a lot of important words, and these words you may get in the exam. That were very important. 